Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today. Hello. We are we're excited to uh, to bring you a very special uh, Broadway SF from home uh, Instagram live today. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. My name is Jonathan Amores, and I'm the digital marketing manager here at Broadway SF, and we're very excited to uh, have a special guest with you with us today. Let's bring him in. Great. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. This is my first Instagram Live, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, great. Well, we're excited to have you here. Hopefully, this is going to be going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to be here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much for going live with us. How, how have you been um, as of late? I know that that we're all we're all staying at home, and, and how's it, how's everything been for you? Yeah, honestly, like, I feel like I'm thriving in this time of being home. It's kind of like my perfect world. I've got my fiance and I've got my dog. And we are just, you know, huddled inside here and doing well. We're in the heart of it all in New York City, you know, where it's been really, really tough. So that's been hard. Um, but we luckily have been staying safe and healthy and um, as sane as we can during this time. So it's it's been as good as it can be in a difficult situation. Oh, well, that's great to hear. And I actually have a question from a fan. Um, has has uh, what new tricks has Hattie learned? I know that Hattie, you said, is your is your dog. We have a question from Aaliyah Penny. <laughs> you know, that's funny. We're actually tra 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 training her to learn a new trick called Ewok, because mm. we always think she looks like a little Ewok from Star Wars. Uh -huh. And so we're trying to get her to jump for treats like a little Ewok, so she looks like a teddy bear. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, very but, you know, she's thriving during this quarantine because her dads are home 24-7 with her and she's never <laughs> left alone. So right. she's like, this is the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, and for everyone who's tuning in right now, so we're here live with Nick Rulo, And he was uh, most recently on our stages at the Golden Gate Theater as uh, Cornelius Hackle in Hello, Dolly, just a little bit over a year ago last February. Um, and Nick also um, finished a, a record 2,500 performances in the Book of Mormon. And you, you were on Broadway, you were in Chicago, on tour, and on the West End. And we're so excited to have you here today. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I thought it'd be, it might be great to, to start at the beginning um, of, of your career, because you were, you were born and raised in Los Altos, yes. uh, right here in the Bay Area. And, and how did you discover musical theater? Great question. You know, uh, my parents put me into children's theater when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. And I started at this place in Mountain View called Peninsula Youth Theater. Oh, and sure. I fell in love with theater right away. And I did shows there from age eight to 18. I probably did over 25 to 30 different productions with PYT. And they are the reason I feel that I got to where I am and how I got the experience that I got growing up. It was yeah. just such a special place to, to be and to do theater. And I try to still go back and work with the kids there as much as I can, just because uh, PYT holds such a special place in my heart. Yeah, that's great. I'm actually, I'm, I'm from Palo Alto I'm myself, and I, I did shows at the Palo Alto Children's Theater right next oh, to Oh, no way. PYT. Yeah. Oh my gosh, such a small world. That's crazy. Yeah, I never did any shows there. But um, I did one show at the Fox Theater in Redwood City. Mm -hmm. I guess that's mm -hmm. kind of close. And then, right. uh, and then I saw some Palo Alto Children's Theater shows as well. Yeah, the Bay Area has a lot of great opportunities for, for young Audience. people in theater. Yeah, because I did a few shows at uh, Children's Musical Theater of San Jose as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I definitely have a connection there as well, which is nice. Do you, do you have any favorite memories of shows that you did growing up? Uh, any any roles that, that stood out for you? I mean, so many. I did all of the, like, inappropriate roles that a high schooler or, like, a young white kid should never do. Right. Like, I played Daniel in Once in This Island, and I played Marib in Aida, which <laughs> blonde-haired white kid, never. No. <laughs> I was also a 15-year-old Jean Valjean, which, you know, oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> which was interesting. Um, but I did so many shows there that I just loved. There's, like, too many memories to even choose from. <laughs> right. And, uh, and your parents were uh, were members of uh, of Broadway SF or SHN, what we were formerly called, and and so you so you grew up watching uh, watching shows at the, the Orphan Golden Gate Theaters, is that right? Yeah, it's yeah. true. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, they got as soon as I started getting into theater, uh, they recognized that that love that I had, and so they started signing up for SHN, what it was called back then, and we went every year to every show that toured through San Francisco, um, so which was so special and so cool, and those theaters are just such historic places. And, you know, as a kid, I knew like, God, to come back and be able to perform at one of these theaters would be just, 
a dream come true. And then, you know, flash forward <laughs> 15, 20 years, I got, to, I got to live that dream, which was so yeah. cool. Yeah, that, that's, that's amazing. Do you, do you have any um, particular memories of like, oh, sitting, sitting in the theater and like, that this is, this is what theater is and this is what really like drew you to, to theater? I mean, a lot. Like, I remember getting to see the um, Broadway out of town tryout for Wicked when you guys oh, did yes. it up in San Francisco mm -hmm. before it came to New York. And I remember like I was sitting in the way, way uh, house left balcony, like way far off to the side. Um, and I remember like leaving through like the, the emergency stairwell exit after the show, just being like, I just watched something so cool that like no one has been able to see yet. And this is gonna just explode. And now, hello, Wicked, what, 20 years on Broadway? <laughs> like Incredible. going crazy. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the coolest experiences I feel that I got to, to watch as part of the San Francisco theater. That's great. Actually, I have a, a question here from a fan about, uh, about the Bay Area. This is from uh, Liz, Liz Tylink. Ty What's your favorite place to visit when in the Bay Area? Uh, during non-COVID times, of course. <laughs> I recognize that face. <laughs> That's so cool that you could pin these questions down there. Yeah, and Ooh. so people watching, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or, or, question, or tap the questions button and leave questions during this live broadcast. Nice. I mean, if I'm coming home and I'm just home for a few days, I pretty much stick to Los Altos. I've got the same places that I go like, I love my sandwich from Alada's Deli down the road. Like that's a place I have to go get a sandwich at. Usually most of my stops are <laughs> revolving around food, really? like food places that I miss. Um, but you know, it's funny because when I was a kid, we didn't get up to San Francisco except for really to come see shows and go to Union Square. And we didn't, I didn't get to explore sort of the neighborhoods in a way that, you know, a local would living in the city. Um, so as an adult, as I've, as I've come back, I've got to sort of explore the city more. And um, I lived in Knob Hill the first time I came through with the Book of Mormon and played San Francisco. Most recently, I lived in Russian Hill while I was staying there with Hello Dolly. So just to get to explore those neighborhoods and, and we had our dog with us. So like taking her to the dog park and feeling like we were living in San Francisco, it was so cool to experience that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that must be a different experience to, to come back as an adult and, and to, to, to see, see the eyes like almost through, through a tourist and like being able to experience it with your cast. And, yeah, because uh, all of my other siblings have lived in San Francisco at mm. one point in their lives for a long time. But, you know, mm. I left California at age 18 for college and I just never came back. <laughs> yeah. So to get to come back on tour and live there for like two, three, four, five weeks even, it's been really cool to sort of feel like I get to have that, that part of my life in San Francisco. Oh, that's great. And yeah, and speaking about, um, about education and leave, leaving, uh, leaving for New York, I have a question here from a fan um, from Sophia Ochoa. Um, did you go to, to college for theater? And if so, which, which one? I did. So I went to NYU in New York City. Um, I left when I was 18 after graduating high school. Uh, I went to school in Atherton for high school. And then I was like, I'm going to New York and I'm going out east. And my mom was, uh, I think, terrified <laughs> of what would happen. Um, but, but it was good. And yeah, I did all four years at NYU. I got a bachelor's of music degree, actually, uh, in musical theater. Um, so a lot of uh, music classes, you know, music theory, keyboard classes, sight singing, all that stuff. And then mixed with that was dancing and acting as well. Um, and that was a really great experience to, to study musical theater in the heart of New York City where Broadway is. You know, there's no other place to study like that. So we had Broadway casting directors coming into our classes and giving us coachings. We had people who were working on Broadway directing and music directing and choreographing our shows. So the experience I got in New York was, was invaluable and, and set me up with connections that just helped me as I graduated and entered the real world. Cause this business can be really tough. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I'll take all of the advantages that I can get. <laughs> right. And I'm sure you, you yeah, met a lot of people along the way and having that support system of people that are going through with you and, and to the people that are going through it together and really learning together, I'm sure it was, was really helpful as well. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And we have a question from someone who's tuning in live right now from Jenna.wish. Any advice for people who want to get into the theater business? Ooh, good question. Gosh, it's so tough. You know, it's a really tough business. Um, and, and who knows what it's going to look like uh, after all this is over. You know, I would give you one answer before this COVID happened. And now it's, you know, we, we're all sort of at a loss and in, in such a period of un, unknowing, like what's, what's going to happen? Right. Um, you know, it's a lot of theater is about connections and it's about training and it's about keeping up your craft. So the things I always say is as an actor, you're never done. 
you're never done studying. Just because you graduated college doesn't mean now you have all the skills that you need to make it professionally. You know, I'm still in acting class today and I've been out of school uh, for 11 years now, out of college. Um, you know, singing lessons, stuff like that. You just, you, you always have to be working on your craft. There's always something to be done because all of it is a muscle. Uh, you know, just because you like get a six pack and you stop working out, like the six pack's gonna go away, right? You have to train it to keep it there. It's the same thing with your acting skills. It's the same thing with your voice. Uh, same thing with dancing. It's, you, it's a lot of work. So I always say that, you know, keep up your work, keep up your craft, keep up your practicing. Uh, that's, that's what really can help set people apart. That's some really great advice. And, and I guess like, yeah, I'm talking about what, what, like in the world we are today, like how are you staying, staying creative uh, these days and, and staying positive? Yeah. I mean, creatively, I mentioned I'm, I'm taking an acting class still, and I'm super lucky that that's transitioned to Zoom. And it's been a really cool uh, transition in how we're acting, because uh, when we are in person and in class, you know, you could do a couple different styles. We could do some sort of like TV film acting, which is smaller. We could do some theater acting, which is a little bit broader, and some Shakespeare as well, which can be really like full body. Now that we're on Zoom, everything is so super close up and zoomed in. So it's been really cool. We're really focusing on sort of like camera work and like TV film acting. And that's something that I've really wanted to, to work on a lot specifically, because it can be so different from stage acting. So that's been a really cool challenge is working on, you know, sort of the minutia of acting when it comes to having a camera right in your face. Uh, it's a totally different style. And you, I never realized how much I blinked before, how much I moved my eyebrows, how expressive I am. I mean, my <laughs> hands are moving now. That's just stuff that you don't do as much on camera acting. So that's been a really cool creative challenge during this. Um, and that happens once a week for a few hours. And that kind of fuels me through the week because I'm always looking for new material and as part of the class we have a lot of viewership requirements so watching movies and tv tv shows through sort of a a, a critical lens uh as as in terms of in terms of acting so that's been really cool something that definitely fuels me through this through this time well, that's great have you seen anything uh, any recommendations for people out there who are looking for something to binge or what, what are you watching during these times i mean i'm watching so <laughs> much what have we watched? I mean, we, we've completely caught up on Westworld and I thought that was great. Um, I'm a huge fan of Fleabag on Amazon both seasons and I think she's incredible and I could watch that over and over again. Um, movies, we've been like, we just watched Amelie this week and that was really incredible. Um, really on the opposite end of that, I watched Sophie's Choice two weeks ago, which I had mm -hmm. never seen and that was, you know, heartbreaking, but really cool to see something that Meryl Streep did at the beginning of her career. Uh, since I'm so used to what she does now uh, at this point in her career. So there's just so much to watch. We're, we're in such a lucky time to be in quarantine because Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV, Disney Plus, everything. There's just an overload of, uh, of options. Right, yeah. And speaking of Netflix, you were, you were in uh, an episode of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, and that must have been so much fun to, to be on set for there. And to, to be in, it was a musical Daddy's Boy, is that correct? Daddy's Boy, that's <laughs> correct. A nice like 1950s RKO uh, sailor uniform, black and white, old classic movie musical. It was such an incredible experience. I didn't even really know what I was getting into at the time because the show wasn't out yet. Um, you know, I obviously saw Tina Fey's name attached to the show and Ellie Kemper and I was like, and Titus. And I was like, God, you know, I know all these people, but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a success that it you know, came to be at that point. And I walk into the, the, the day that I spent on set and it's like 8 a.m. and they're like, go to the recording studio. And the first person in there is Tina Fey. And she's like, hi, I'm Tina. And I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, I know exactly who you are. <laughs> like, this is crazy. <laughs> Um, it was just such a special day and to work with Jefferson Mays, who I've admired as you know, his work in Gentleman's Guide and other shows <laughs> on Broadway um, and to get to play his daddy's boy was really fun. <laughs> Oh, that's great. And um, yeah, and, and just um, get, getting back to, to talking about theater um, again. Um, what, so, so you made your, your, your Broadway debut at the age of 24, um, and you were the, the standby of Andrew Reynolds in, in the Book of Mormon. And, and so what has that, um, what's it meant to you to, to be able to play Elder Price, not only on Broadway, but on tour across the country and on the West End? Yeah. Gosh, I mean, it, it's meant the world. People ask me all the time, like, what is your dream role? Like, what's the role you want to play? And I always say, I've already gotten to do that. Like, I got to do that role, Elder Price, for 2,500 shows, eight times a week for six and a half years. Um, and that show, you know, did so much for my life. Just the, the people that it introduced me to, the uh, experiences that it opened up for me, the places I got to travel and do the show. Uh, it, it's just, I, I just... 
I'm, I, it's hard to believe that I will ever experience another job like that, that gives me all of that joy and happiness and experience. Um, and so I definitely treasure the time I, I spent with it. And I, and I tried in the moment to be as appreciative as possible of the experience I was being given. Um, it just really, really truly was a, a once in a lifetime experience. Oh, that's great. And I have here a um, production photo <laughs> of you in the, in the cast. That's our West End cast. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And so, yeah, what was that experience like um, performing on the West End and to, to, oh. to taking a show across, across the pond? Yeah, it was so cool. I mean, obviously, the coolest part of that was living in London for a year. And, you know, the show spoiled me. And, you know, when, you know, because I'm not from there, they have to sort of like fly you over and put you up in housing. I lived in the most amazing apartment that I could never afford in New York City. And I lived right in the heart of Covent Garden. I was a five minute walk from the theater. It was just such an amazing experience. Obviously, getting to do the show uh, on the West End was a highlight in itself. But then on top of that, I got to travel in London and in England and in Europe as much as I could. So every day off, I was on a train somewhere east, north, south, west, away from London to see a new town and get to experience something. Um, they give you four weeks of paid vacation in London, which we don't get on Broadway. That's crazy. We get two weeks. So to have like double vacation, I was like, I was in Germany. I was in Italy. I was everywhere. I was like, where can I go uh, <laughs> while I'm over here? And like flights are so cheap and so short. Right. And any, any favorite, uh, favorite places that you visited in Europe? Oh, Morocco. Oh, I spent okay. a Thanksgiving in Morocco, Morocco, which was just the most not Thanksgiving place, right? <laughs> you know, compared to like a United States Thanksgiving. I remember we were on the plane on Thanksgiving morning and in the airport, we found like turkey and cranberry sandwiches. So we brought those on the plane to have our like American Thanksgiving on the plane. And then we landed in Morocco and had camel burgers the next meal. So like very oh, different. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but Morocco is just such a cool place. So different from any place I've ever visited before. And the architecture is breathtaking um and just it, yeah it was just really a cool experience oh that's awesome um and, and so you so you played um elder price uh i hate the orpheum theater in san francisco uh in the fall of 2013 and and what was that like to to perform um in in the bay area as an adult as an adult was that your first time performing as an adult um since you were you were growing up it was you know and i like i said earlier like it was always my dream to come back and to get to do a show at either or the Orpheum or the Golden Gate, any of those San Francisco theaters. And so to get to do that with Book of Mormon was so surreal. We were there, I think, for four weeks mm -hmm. um, over Christmas of 2015, maybe it was. Um, and so, like, I was home for Christmas, which I'm also never home for. So oh, that was so yeah. special. Um, but I remember stepping onto the stage for our sound check for the first time and, like, seeing the view from the stage to the audience. And I was so used to the reverse view. And so to mm -hmm. see that, it was just... Uh, I just remember getting goosebumps down my body and I was like, oh, like, this is so special. This is so cool. Like I was up there in that, you know, in that balcony, in that backseat watching shows. And now I'm here standing on stage. It was just a, such a full circle moment. So surreal. And then to have, you know, friends and family be able to come see the show so easily. They don't have to fly to New York to come see it. My mom was a ticket maven she was like getting tickets left and right anyone she knew with season subscriptions she was like can i help get your extra tickets can i buy tickets off of you can we get these seats uh we had people there every show it felt so cool i felt like a rock star <laughs> it was really crazy okay it looks like we um corey says eight weeks um, oh eight weeks sorry <laughs> well you know what corey would know i see yeah. like look at i've got my my uncle jim there my oh, auntie die logged on my mom <laughs> <laughs> oh, big a whole family affair. This is great. I have a large family, so chances are most of these people here are related to me. <laughs> My cousin Eric is there now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and so, and so, so you, uh, so you met Corey, um, your your partner in in the World Book of Mormon in Chicago. Is that right? Yeah, that's and then, right. And then, yeah, and then you later toured with him in in the Hello Dolly. Um, right. And, and so last week I talked to uh, Nick Adams, who was here doing falsettos, and he met his partner in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, how, could you tell us the story of how the two of you met? And, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can remember the first time I met him. I was doing the show in New York, and he was coming in 
um, to the Broadway theater to meet with our hair supervisor to have like a wig fitting for him for the tour. And I didn't know he was doing the tour yet. I actually didn't know I was going to Chicago yet. That was news to me. Oh. Um, and I remember he just, he just caught my eye. There was something about it. He walked by and I just said like, hi, can I help you like find something? And he's like, I'm looking for hair. And I like pointed him across the stage and that was it. And then like flash forward a couple months later, we're in rehearsals for the Chicago company. And I was like, I, I remember that kid. Um, Anyway, we, you know, it's hard with, it's hard with showmances, as we like to call it in the business, because it can be really dangerous, it can be really tricky. So actually, we were very smart about it. We kind of put it off for a while. There was definitely that initial attraction, um, but we c became really good friends first. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and after a few months of being really good friends and his uh, advances, uh, I couldn't say no anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. We got to tour together, do the Chicago production with Book of Mormon. We both got to do it on Broadway a little bit together as well. And then we got to tour uh, with Hello Dolly with our dog Hattie. And um, we got it. We uh, bought a used car for that journey, and we traveled and drove from city to city. We didn't fly with the cast. We drove ourselves, okay. and um, that was just such a cool experience. And um, I think actually trained us well for quarantine. My dad said that the other day. He's like, <laughs> you spent a year of your life in a car with you, Corey, and the dog. Like, you guys are like game for this quarantine. Right. Like, you're good for small spaces. And I'm like, yes, we really are. Um, oh, that's great. But we've been so lucky to get to do two, you know, two Broadway tours together now, uh, which is not normal in this business. So we've been very fortunate uh, for the experience we've had with that. Oh, that's great. It looks like we have, a, we have a comment here from from Jeffrey MC. He says, "Hi Nick, I remember when we had to put you on for your first time as Price on Broadway." <sighs> Jeff McGovney. So Jeff <laughs> was my first ever dresser at the Book of Mormon, oh, and wow. he, so he was the original dresser for Andrew and Josh uh, on Broadway, and uh, he went on to be have an amazing career with Book of Mormon and ended up being, being the head of wardrobe and everything. Um, but he will always have a special place in my heart because, uh, because he helped me uh, survive that, those first shows. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for tuning in, Jeffrey. And um, yeah, so, so you, were, you were in the Book of Mormon for, for about six, six and a half years, is that right? And That's so how, right. How, did you, how were you able to keep, keep it fresh for yourself um, to, to, to be, be in a show and playing a role for, for such a, an extended period of time? Yeah, I mean, you know, luckily I was working with the most amazing material. So it's easy to perform material like the Book of Mormon. It's just genius, you know, songs, the script, choreography, everything is just so perfect. So it was just easy to perform. But also, you know, I got to do the show with 17 different Elder Cunninghams in my six and a half years, <laughs> which is a lot. And uh, what, what that did was help keep it fresh. You know, there was always someone new on that stage with you. Um, and so because they were delivering the lines in a slightly different way, your responses to the lines were different and it made the show feel totally brand new and fresh. Uh, it also helped changing up the companies and traveling so much. So going from Broadway to Chicago, back to Broadway to London, back to Broadway, you know, there were always different people on stage with me. So it helped to keep it fresh, having new surroundings, you know, in my personal life helped keep that right. fresh. Uh, everything about that. So, you know, at the end of the day, as an actor doing a long running show, it's your job to perform like it's, it's your first show because that mm -hmm. audience sitting there that night has probably never seen the show before and they deserve to see the opening night version of the show. So, you know, I take that very seriously and, and I respect the audience in that way that they deserve to get a good show. So I never want to phone it in. I never want to just slough it off. I never want to give anything but my best. Um, and I know there's a lot of actors who, who think that way, and that's sort of the best way that you can do a show. And if everyone is thinking that way together, then you just get theater magic on stage. Oh, that's great. And yeah, and so one of, one of the, um, the, yeah, the Cunninghams that you worked, that you worked with in Chicago was, was Ben Platt. Yeah. And so that, that must have been a really great, a fun experience for, for both of you to be together. Yeah, we got to do the show together for two years. We did it a year in Chicago. And then we went to Broadway and he got to make his Broadway debut and I got to join him uh, mm -hmm. for that and witness that. And we have become so close. His family is like a second family to me. They are so sweet, so caring. He is such a generous guy and I'm so thrilled for the crazy success he's had. Mm -hmm. um, his Netflix concert is coming out, I think, next week, yeah. right? Yeah, next I week, I think. Actually yeah. go. He invited me to go and watch it at Radio City. Uh, I took Corey and my sister, and we just had the best time. Oh, uh, the, great. the concert's so good. And uh, I'm just so happy for everything that, that, that he's had come into his life. It's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah, well, I, yeah I'm excited to, to watch his uh, concert special and maybe see you in the audience or let's see you. <laughs> maybe. <laughs>
And here we have a comment here from Aaliyah Penny. She said, uh, Aaliyah says, I saw you as Elder Price in four cities and have no regrets. Four and cities? That's, awesome. that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and, and Owen Franklin Art says you were amazing in the Book of Mormon. You're honestly one of my favorite Broadway actors. Oh, um, thank so you. Great. <laughs> and um, here we have another question here um, from Purple Fried Banana. Um, any advice for college auditioning? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, you know, college was really, it was really hard to audition for college. And I took it really personally, especially when I got rejected. And I got rejected for more schools than I got. Uh, admitted to. <laughs> um, and look, I still made it on Broadway. Like, you know, it, it doesn't mean anything. Um, and I took those rejections really personally. Um, and I and I wish I, I guess I wish I hadn't. Um, you know, you just have to be you is the best thing I can say is as, as I feel like I was trying to fit the mold of who I thought these college programs wanted. And I think especially as as the Broadway community has sort of become more open and diverse and sort of acknowledging the importance of diversity, uh, with that comes the importance of just being yourself. You know, don't don't go in there trying to be what you think they want, trying to fit this mold, trying to be that, you know, leading actor. Like, be who you are. Show what you do, because no one else can do you better than you. So, you know, highlight what, what you're good at. Uh, that's the best advice I think I can give. That's that's really great. Yeah, yeah. Be yourself and and and, and find ways to, to showcase who you are. And I feel like exactly, really exactly. Um, and we have another. We have a question here from a fan. That I'll pull up here. This is from Jump Horses, twenty twenty. Um, is it hard taking over a role that has already been formed, and how do you yes. make it your own? <laughs> yes, it is question. so so hard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I learned a lot from taking over from Andrew Reynolds, and I made a lot of mistakes uh, that I think taught me a lot. You know, when I first when I was his standby, I was trying to deliver his performance. And when I took over, I was also trying to deliver his exact performance. And like I said, being yourself, you know, putting Andrew's performance on my body just was weird. There was something off about it. It just didn't work. Um, you know, it's the same show and it's the same material, but each actor brings their own personality. And so the best thing that happened to me was when we rehearsed the Chicago production, uh, I was back in a four week rehearsal process while still doing the show on Broadway at night. So like crazy long days. Um, but our director, Casey Nicola, you know, beat Andrew Randall's performance out of me and said, get your own performance, find your price, find your version. Mm -hmm. And it was really hard. And he was really hard on me and he got really frustrated with me because it was really hard to break that down. But he persisted and I persisted and we did it. <laughs> and we got to find my version of the show. And that was one of the most fulfilling things. And when we opened in Chicago, I felt like I did it, you know, like I found my, my show and I yeah. found my show with Ben. And then with every other Cunningham that came, I, I, I remembered those lessons. I was like, find your show with that person, like find your chemistry together because it's not a show about you two as individual actors, it's a show about you two together. And the chemistry you have really makes the show special. Um, so I learned a lot from those mistakes, but I definitely made a ton of mistakes. But I was also 24, 25, like, of course you're gonna make mistakes. I'm still making mistakes now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's really great. I like how, yeah, just, just finding ways to, to make it your own and, and being in the moment with each different actor. I, think it's, yeah. it's really I would like to look to see that my mom and my cousin are both promoting my father's orthodontic business. Do you see that? Oh, great. <laughs> we, we love Rilo Ortho, look at those teeth. My oh. dad and my brother are both orthodontists and they work together in Mountain View. Oh, wow. Oh, great. And yeah, my whole fa I come from a whole family of dentists. My grandfather actually has a school named after him in the city, not too far from the Golden Gate, uh, the Arthur A. Dagoni School of Dentistry as part of UOP, University of the Pacific. Oh, so I come from a long line of dentists and orthodontists. <laughs> and, uh, and if I didn't have pearly white teeth, I think I would be shunned from from the family. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, so, so I guess grow, growing up in, in, a, in a family of, of orth orthodontistry, I don't know if that's the right word, like how, yeah, how, did, how did you, um, yeah, just, uh, it was, I mean, it's great. I mean, this is maybe not more of a question, but like, yeah, it's great that, that your parents were able to, to foster that, that creative side and that, that theater side. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm really lucky they were so supportive. They always teased growing up that I would be, that I should become the singing orthodontist and that I could like work <laughs> in my dad's practice and like, start singing to patients. But as soon as my older brother started going to school for dentistry, I was like, thank God I'm off the hook. I can really like go, <laughs> go full throttle towards theater. Um, yeah. But yeah, they were so, both of my parents have been so supportive, my whole family really, um, from day one and, and recognized that I had this desire and they fostered it and they provided me with experiences that I'm so thankful for. And they really rooted for me um, and they continue to root for me. They're there at every show. 
uh, when I came through both times to San Francisco with Hello Dolly and Book of Mormon, they were there all the time. Um, so it's just been, it's been really, I've been really fortunate. Oh, that's great. And this is a great transition to talking about Hello Dolly. Um, so, so that was, um, so what, what drew you to the role of, um, of Cornelius and what, what excited you about going on tour again? And I have, oh. a, I have a, a photo here from, from the production. Ooh, oh, there we are. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Doing elegance. That's one of my favorite numbers in the show. That's how we open act two. Um, Great. And it's just so fun. I, you know, Hello Dolly is so different from the Book of Mormon in so many ways. And yet it's also so the same. Obviously, Book of Mormon is so um, profane and inappropriate. But Book of Mormon at its heart is this traditional big Broadway musical. And so is Hello Dolly. And Hello Dolly is just full of so much joy and happiness and love. And not to mention, this was like the most expensive, lavish production of the show that's ever been done. <laughs> and so it was just beautiful. It was just like a feast for the eyes and the orchestrations. We had a full band traveling with us. Um, there's so much that, that drew me to that show. Obviously, the character of Cornelius is so lovable. He's so optimistic. Um, you know, when the show opens, you meet him being really frustrated and stuck in his life and he just really wants an adventure. And so he's like, you know what, darn it, we're going to go out and we're going to get this adventure and I'm going to kiss a girl. And that's what he does. And you know, he's just got such a uh, pure unbridled joy and innocence about him. Um, that was, you know, honestly, really easy to tap into. Um, I feel like I naturally have a lot of joy in my life. And so did Elder Price. So like, I found a lot of similarities in that. Um, but, get, but to get to tour with that show, um, you know, in a first class touring production, you know, mm -hmm. amazing cities, like I said, expensive set, expensive costumes. I mean, the audiences were just loving the show. And afterwards, they would just be like, this that was the most beautiful spectacle I ever saw. And I was like, right? Like, it's so <laughs> cool. And you know, like, Hello Dolly is a long show. It's like over two and a half hours. But for me and for a lot of the audience, it just flies by. Um, just because it's so happy and joyous. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> here's, here's a question that we have from a fan. Um, this is from uh, Ed. EDM Instagram, uh, what's one thing that happens backstage that most people aren't aware of? Oh, well, there's so many backstage shenanigans that happen. <laughs> like, so, we are so, as I tell my dog, you're so naughty. We are so naughty backstage. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm guilty. Uh, I feel like I have a really good understanding of how to do it in a professional way mm -hmm. that, um, creates an element of fun backstage, but without distracting from the show uh, that's happening for the audience. Because like I said, respect for the audience, they deserve to see a great show. But in the wings, you know, chances are we are fooling around. Um, in Hello Dolly, there was this really long time uh, in the restaurant scene in the Harmonia Gardens, where the Fab Four, uh, the, which is Ermengarde, I'm not sorry, Ermengarde, uh, Minnie Faye, Irene, me and Barnaby, we're all sitting at a dinner table, but these curtains open and close. and there's like this huge dance number where we have like 20 minutes practically where we're just sitting in this table and chairs, but we can't get out. We're stuck on stage. So we had all sorts of stuff to keep us entertained there. We had decks of cards <laughs> hidden under the plates. We had doodles that we were drawing. We would um, play hangman. We played phase 10. We did all this stuff. We created all these games and we were laughing so hard and we would get in trouble sometimes for being too loud. The boys would be dancing and the waiters gallop around us and we'd just hear them go, shh as they were dancing along, we're like, oh, wait, okay, right, there's a show going on, we gotta be quiet. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I guess we're related. Uh, this is also from EDM Instagram. What is, is it a most memorable performance mishap? Hmm. I mean, there's definitely been times, <clears throat> there was one time in Book of Mormon, and I believe, where I went to like, emphatically say, and Dang it, a Mormon just believes, and I kicked my shoe off into the audience uh, oh, wow. because our shoes had elastic laces because we had to quick change so much. So sometimes they would get loose. <laughs> and so I had to finish the number hobbling around with just one shoe on. Um, I think eventually I did take off the second shoe and just kind of threw it off stage. Um, yeah. That was one of my favorite mishaps. We've had a lot. You know, Book of Mormon, we had a ton where there would just be automation issues or like, uh, you know, the drops wouldn't happen correctly. And I remember doing the Orlando, like, I'm here. Uh, this is it, Orlando. And we had to do it once, like twice. And I was like, I'm here again, <laughs> Orlando. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, 
here's a here's a question and another one from from Aliyah Penny. Have you kept any Mormon or Halle Dolly props or costume pieces? Oh, Maybe yes. not necessarily costume pieces, but any yeah piece of me memorabilia from the show. All sorts of stuff. I have actually. Hello Dolly gave us a backpack as part of our uh, like going on tour gift from the producers, which oh, was so sweet. Yeah. And actually, I have all my memorabilia stuffed in there. So I have t-shirt, uh, t-shirts, an apron. Um, I actually have this doll. I don't know if Willie Woo is watching, but he's actually a Bay Area guy and followed us a lot on Hello Dolly and came to a ton of different uh, theaters to see the show. And he made me a Cornelius replica doll that has a box. I think it was an Aladdin doll. And he like made it a little costume and he painted the face and the hair. He put it inside the plastic box. He redid the entire thing. It is so special and so oh, cool. Awesome. So I have that like saved to us. Like I'm never getting rid of that. And then Book of Mormon, I have like eight name tags that I stole. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I tried to steal my Mormon pajamas. Uh, the Mormon onesie, the underwear, uh, mm -hmm. and I and I made it away with about two months. For two months, I had it, and then they ran into some emergency situation and they needed it they back. Needed it. They're mm -hmm. like, "Do you have your underwear by any chance?" Like, if you do, we won't get mad. Just drop it off, leave it at the theater, and then we'll be we'll uh, pretend nothing happened. I was like, "Damn, dude." <laughs> oh, okay. here's another question from a fan, um, Sophia Ochoa. She asks, "What's the most meaningful song you performed in Hello Dolly or Book of Mormon?" Mm. It's a big question. Book of Mormon, my favorite song is I Believe. Uh, it's just such an epic anthem and so cool. You know, it's just you on that stage for most of the number. And it's it's amazingly powerful to perform and then becomes so ridiculous when the general comes on stage and you're dancing with him, trying to convert him to Mormonism. Just the gall that Elder Price has to think that this warlord general is going to become a Mormon with him. But that's what's so great about the character is he's just so optimistic and so, uh, you know, he's just so positive. He thinks that everyone wants to experience this this religion with him. And he's like, I'm not afraid to just go there and do it. Um, for Hello Dolly, getting to do, I mean, Sunday Clothes at, at Act One was just amazing. Such an epic number. And then It Only Takes a Moment is just so sweet and tender. And, um, and to get to do that with Irene, and I got to play opposite Annalisa Lemming, who has been a friend of mine for a long time. And uh, that was just really special. Oh, that's great. Uh, here, here's another question that we have. This is from uh, like Nate uh, Kale. Probably, probably, or, <laughs> what is your favorite Broadway song to sing at karaoke? Gosh, there's so many. Um, <laughs> usually anything that Alphaba sings in Wicked, I like to try to nice. sing and then I fail miserably. Um, <laughs> Specifically, I'm Not That Girl, which is not a great karaoke song because it's pretty pretty much a downer, but then The Wizard and I. But then non-favorite Broadway karaoke song is, um, <laughs> what is it called? I was, it's like Backstreet Boys are insane. I was hanging with the fellas, saw you with your new girlfriend and made me jealous. I was open that never me with him. Anyway, you get it. That <laughs> whole and Backstreet Boys, The Call is a really great song. Oh, nice. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you have to get karaoke when, when they're open next time. <laughs> no, don't take me. <laughs> I can never uh, sing the next day because I just scream. Or you, just, you just blow it out. <laughs> um, we have another question uh, from a fan. This is, uh, if Elter Price and Cornelius hung out for a day, what would they do? That's a fun question. You know, they probably have the best time together because they're both <laughs> so like happy and gung-ho and ready for adventures. I don't know what they would do. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna think on that. I'm gonna get back to you. It's a great but I think question. they'd have. A, I think they'd have a great time. You know, they probably go to. I mean, they probably go to Disney World. Let's be real, because Cornelius has never oh, had an adventure yes. outside of New York State. Now, right? He's been in New York City, but then he's back in Yonkers. So I bet he'd want to go down to Florida with Elder Price, and Elder Price would be like, "I'll show you every ride, and I'll show you everything, <laughs> all the little backstage tricks, all that stuff." Ah, uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> um, let's see. There's another question here. Um, oh, this, this, is, this is a great question. Here, this is from Aaliyah Penny. What's the first show that you would want to see, show you would want to see as soon as we're safely able to do so? Company, 100% company. Love Katrina Lang, love that whole cast. Nikki Daniels is in it, who did uh, Book of Mormon with me. She was one of our Nabalungis and I love her. Um, Itai Benson is amazing. Matt Doyle's in it. Uh, the whole cast is stacked. Uh, Patty Lapone, obviously, hello. Um, <laughs> I just, I really want to see that show. And 
I'm confident that, you know, I know it's, we don't know what's going to happen. And, and with the news with Frozen yesterday, which was just terrible and heartbreaking, I'm confident that company is going to, I just have a feeling they're going to, they're going to survive this and they're going to get back up and running. And great. that's the one I'm going to be at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and sort of relatedly, um, somewhat, Maggie, uh, Maggie Little asks, what's your favorite production that you've ever seen? Ah, oh, The Light in the Piazza at Lincoln Center, mm -hmm. 2008. I think I saw it 10 times. I saw it on tour as well. It's what's really started my obsession, and I do mean obsession, with Kelly O'Hara. I love everything that she does. <laughs> Super fangirl of Kelly O'Hara. Um, but The Light in the Piazza, I just thought it was beautiful. Um, you know, definitely like a, a lesser known musical and a smaller sort of chamber show. Um, but just Adam Gettle's music, he's one of my favorite composers. I think his music is breathtaking. And any show that Bartlett Share directs at Lincoln Center, I think is also breathtaking. So just all of those elements coming together, it, it was just perfect. And, and, and it was just strong memories. It was my senior year of college. And I can remember going with my good friend, Jordan Person, multiple times. And uh, it's just moments I'll never forget. And I just, I love that show. It's got a special place in my heart. Oh, that's great. Um, let's see here. We have another question. Let's see if we're, oh, this, this is great. This is, um, um, what's your favorite? Oh, wait, no, we, I think we, I think I might've asked that already. That's not what I, let's see. <laughs> it was, here it is. What? What have you been doing to stay healthy during quarantine? Yeah. You know, in some ways I feel like I'm healthier than ever because, because I've got no excuses to not work out. I'm working out six days a week and I get myself <laughs> Sundays off. Um, I do a lot of built for the stage workouts to plug built for the stage and plug, plug, uh, plug coach Joe Roscoe. He's great. And actually what's great about him right now is you can follow him on Instagram and you can sign up for him. He's doing a special. It's only $8 a month during quarantine and all $8 is going to the uh, Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS COVID Assistance Fund, which is amazing. Um, so he's doing really great work for that. And it's been a nice, you know, focus to, to get my workout in. So I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of built for the stage. Um, and we're cooking at home, obviously, more than ever, because, yeah. you know, we're stuck at home. And so it's been fun to, like, plan out our meals. And, and I guess we're eating a little bit healthier. I don't know. We're just not eating out as much. And so um, that's been helping as well. Yeah. And then long walks with the dog. You know, we put on our face mask and we go out into Riverside Park and we walk for two to three miles every day um, with her and give her a nice long walk, which has been really great. That's right. Have you, have you, um, what have been some, some particularly triumphant meals that you've, that you've prepared? Oh, our stage manager from Book of Mormon, Karen Moore, has started this weekly recipe email that she sends to everybody. And people oh. will send her recommendations that they have with little stories. It's honestly the most sweet thing ever because in this email is just like, it's all these people I know and love from the Book of Mormon with all these stories attached to the recipes. And then we get to try them. She sent this taco one that is unbelievable. And I, we've made it now three weeks in a row uh, for multiple meals a day. I'm just obsessed <laughs> with it. Um, that's, been, that, that, that's been a great one. But yeah, these emails are so sweet. And it's just like such a lovely way to keep in touch and like still feel like I'm a part of these people's lives, even though we're all so separate right now. Mm. Um. There was a question, I don't see it now, but, but there was a question that someone asked, like, what is, your, what is your, the, the best thing that you've done in quarantine that didn't involve a screen? I think that's a great question. Ooh. Oh, I was about to answer a video game, but that involves oh, a screen. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm obsessed with Splatoon on the Switch. I can't stop playing. It's like this like, paintball game. Um, and then I was just going to say Zoom calls, but that also involves a screen. Apparently, my whole <laughs> days involve screens. Honestly, one of the biggest things I've been working on is um, I've been working on voiceover work and getting like a home oh. voiceover setup. So I've been learning a lot about that and experimenting with my microphone, which I guess kind of involves a screen, but not really. Um, and it's been really fun to sort of like challenge this other side of my brain that I don't get to exercise and learn how to sort of like engineer sound and mix sound. And that's been, that's been really, really cool. And then I'm also reading a lot of poetry. That acting class mm -hmm. I mentioned, he, one of the requirements is reading like poetry every week. So I have like six poetry books sitting by my bed and I just pick one up and read it. And I've never really read poetry before in this way. And it's been really cool. Oh, that's great. Um, so I, I do have a, another question here. I know that, that one of um, your past experiences was playing uh, Woody in Toy Story the Musical. And I was wondering, I have, I have a picture here. <laughs> um, <you> <laughs> there you are. Look at that foam costume. That costume was horrible because 
I mean, look at, do you, you see how like kind of like tubby I look? Like it is like <laughs> two inches thick of foam all the way around. Oh, and wow. the only place heat is escaping your body is through your fingertips because you're also wearing a plastic wig that they glue to your head and like glue down. So literally you're sweating and doing the show, but the sweat can only get out of your fingertips. So everything is just mm. covered in sweat, which is so gross. But we would do that show twice a night. So, and you only had one costume and you had about an hour break in between shows. So when you put on the costume again for the second show, there was no way it was going to be dry. <laughs> so it was sweaty <laughs> and cold and gross. And this is probably way too much information, but oh, doing that second show every night, it just felt so miserable. You were like, no, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to put it on. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that seems very, that, yeah, very, it can be very difficult. I'm sure just like uncomfortable, but. <laughs> <laughs> Overshare. Oh, but. That was that was such a cool experience too. And obviously like I've got such a love for Woody now and my mom <laughs> still will send me Woody things and gifts like Christmas still on Christmas morning I'll get something Woody related. She's got still a sticker on my bedroom door at home in California that has Woody on it and now my oh. nieces and nephews love it. So they like kind of associate me with Woody which is really sweet. Oh, that is very sweet. Um we have another question here. Um well, I guess this is more of a comment. Says, Can you come back to London ASAP, please? We miss you. Yes. Um, from Paul Twin. Oh, Paul. <laughs> Paul's a good friend of mine. <laughs> oh, great. Yes, Paul. I would love to come back to London. I, I, literally, any, if anybody's got a show there and they're, and they're willing to uh, hire me, uh, I'm available. <laughs> and I will even find my own housing this time. I would love to go. I loved it there so much. Oh, that's great. Um, let's see if there are any other other questions here to uh, do, do okay great well th yeah this is one that I, I brought up earlier but I think I just missed it what's your favorite part about being an actor and being on Broadway just in general I mean there's so many answers to that right yeah <laughs> like I love meeting people at the stage door that's really mm. cool and to like you know, I was growing up, I was always too embarrassed to go to the stage door. I don't know why I just like felt I was very shy. And I just didn't want to yeah, I didn't want to bother anyone. But I love coming out and like getting to hear people's reactions to the show. And that that the performances we're doing are affecting their lives and impacting them for the better. Um, and to see that, you know, we're bringing positive change to them and just bringing them joy. That's really, really special. Um, selfishly, I love to see the pride it brings my parents and my family to like perform on Broadway. Um, I love that it's made them happy um, and that makes me happy. And then, you know, obviously who doesn't love the applause and who doesn't love the attention, right? Like <laughs> standing up on that stage and like getting to do your curtain call after the show, like it's such a feat what we do eight times a week. It's really hard work. And so like to get recognized for that and to get applause, it just feels good and it warms the soul. <laughs> Have you had any um, memorable fan intera interactions that have, that have stuck with you over the years? So many. Um, in Chicago, I we had all these amazing fans who used to tease the hell out of me for wearing plaid shirts. Apparently, I wore a plaid shirt every single day. And I loved it because then for my final performance, they all came dressed in plaid shirts together. And we oh. took this big photo together. And that was really special. I was like, That's you guys. You know, it's always fun to see people come in costume. With Book of Mormon, you always get people dressed up as elders, especially Elder McKinley. And that's mm -hmm. always awesome to come to the stage door and see that. With Hello, Dolly, we even got some people fully dressed up in the red Hello, Dolly dress from the Harmonia Gardens. There was a lady in the front row, one show. I forget what city we were in, but fully done up, like full on headdress with feathers. I'm pretty sure they had to ask her to remove it because she was blocking <laughs> the view of everyone behind her. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Willie Wu, who I mentioned who made the doll, has just made some amazing artwork with, with Hello Dolly. He made an entire miniature version of the set. And it's like so accurate. It's so crazy. I don't know how he did this. Right. Um, but uh, he's, he's created some amazing things that's had some great memories. I like someone's writing there, the Platter Day Saints. That's what they call themselves with the plaid back <laughs> in Chicago. Oh, it's oh, very that's amazing. Funny. Um, so yeah, lo looking back on, on, on growing up and, um, and, and your, your career as you've had, like, what, what, what is some advice that you would give your younger self? Yeah. You know, I did, I did an interview with Peninsula Youth Theater the other day, and, and, oh, and this kid asked the same question. And I told him, I said, I wish I, I, like, I wish I was less embarrassed as a kid, and I wish I took more risks. I wish I wasn't so focused on getting the right answer 
in everything. And I think that was like the like straight A student in me wanting to like find like the right answer to every test, like acing every test. And I tried to put that mentality into my acting work and my singing work. And I wish I sort of was just a little bit more free. And I wish I was free to make more mistakes and free to just like try and experiment more with theater. Cause that's something I'm now feel like I've been playing catch up with as an adult. Um, but you know, it's hard for, it's hard for a teenager to sort of like be free like that. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> you're so worried about what people think we all are. And uh, I wish there was an easier way to just tell myself back then to, to not give, not give a bloop about what other people think and just, uh, just live in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, Nick Walsh says, OMG, hello to you both. Hi, Hi Nick Walsh. <laughs> Um, Nick I'm Walsh was helping me because I got locked out of my Twitter account this week. That was a big oh. deal. Uh, Nick, I'm officially back into my Twitter. Someone hacked it, changed my email address, changed my phone number, everything. It was very, oh, wow. very dramatic. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you're back on. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> you got me messages from my Twitter account in the last few weeks. It definitely wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> um, Amelia C. Uh, Lynch asks, what's the funniest thing that happened during Book of Mormon? I know you've shared a lot of, a lot of recaps yeah. already, but is there something that, I mean, that particularly sticks out? Everything funny that happened always had to do with Josh Gad. Mm. <laughs> and as a standby when the show started, I got to watch the show a lot from the back of the house um, <clears throat> and watch the live performances. And he, I mean, talk about like king of comedy. If something went wrong and something always went wrong, he just knew how to roll with the punches and make the audience laugh. Uh, he was just so ridiculous on stage and off. He used to do this impression of Rory O'Malley on the loudspeaker backstage about how grateful Rory O'Malley is. And he'd be like, hi everybody, I'm, I'm Rory and I'm just so grateful. And it was, <laughs> I can't do it right. But Josh was so, he also did a Maya Angelou impression that was creepily dead on. Um, he was just someone so crazy fun to work with uh, and just to watch just because he is, he's a hoot. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's so much fun. Yeah, we, we got a chance to, to work with Maury when he was uh, King George III in yeah. the first tour of Hamilton here. Um, yeah, he's great. I love, yeah. love, love Rory. One of the most generous people to work with uh, was always so sweet to me making my Broadway debut and doing the show for the first time. He was so supportive and held my hand through that show. And he's just, yeah, really special guy. Oh, that's great. Uh, well, I just wanted to, to, to thank you again for, for making the time to, to talk with us today. Is there any, yeah. any um, fi final thoughts that, that, that you have to, or what, things you want to share with, with the fans who are watching? No, I just want to say thank you for having me and thanks everyone for tuning in. It's nice to see so many names that I recognize like scrolling up <laughs> and down here. I saw my dad said hi at some point see my aunts and uncles and cousins and other names I recognize. It's just, it's so sweet. So I thank you all for tuning in and I hope everyone's doing well and staying sane and healthy and safe. And it's a, it's a tough time. Yeah. And well, yeah. And, and yeah, right. And, and, and thank you for, for, for doing your first Instagram live with us. I hope this was, well, this was a great success for you. And <laughs> it's so easy. Who knew? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much again. We really appreciate the, the time that you've taken to talk to us today and, I hope I uh, hope you hope you'll do well in uh and safe in, in New York. And Thank we'll, we'll you. See you again. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks so much. Nick. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Great. And thanks so much, everyone, for, for tuning in today. Uh, it was so fun seeing uh, Nick. And uh, stay tuned for more uh, Instagram lives in the future. And uh, everyone, stay safe and healthy at home. And um, we'll see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us.